Hello and welcome to this talk. Now let me give you the bottom line on this video so you can decide if you want to watch. Large study at the Cleveland Clinic found out that the flu vaccine, the influenza vaccine over last winter, uh, wasn't that effective. In fact, it had a negative efficacy of 26.9%. In other words, if you took this flu vaccine, you were 26.9% more likely, more likely to get influenza. Um, now, unfortunately, the paper doesn't give us details on how much money the pharmaceutical industry made from selling this vaccine with negative efficacy, nor does it list the side effects that occurred from this vaccine. But I would say that the side effects from this vaccine would be considerably less than it were if it was a mRNA type vaccine. It's not. It's a it's a dead virus type uh, vaccine. Now, this is from the same group uh, as gave us this excellent study in 2023. Uh, this was the study that showed uh, negative efficacy for the COVID uh, vaccine as well. In fact, we could maybe just look at one of their charts here. Uh, this is one of their charts from that study. What it's showing is that up and down here, we have cumulative incidence of COVID-19, increasing incidence of COVID-19. Here we have the number of days and here we have the number of doses of vaccine. Now, I know you can't see it on the screen, but that zero dose is there. That's one dose there, two doses there and three doses higher up. Now, what this shows is that people who had no doses of vaccine had less cumulative incidence of COVID-19. Those that had one vaccine dose had more than those that had zero. Those that had two vaccine doses had more incidence than those that had had one dose. And those that had had three doses had a higher cumulative incidence of those that had had uh, no doses over that uh, 100, what is it, basically a six month uh, period or more. Now, hard to make up, negative vaccine efficacy. And of course, that's without looking at all the adverse reactions and the side effects. Not only that, that original Cleveland study gave us this rather useful graphic here. And this shows the uh, effectiveness of natural immunity. So last infected during the uh, Omicron phase, then less accumulative incidence, cumulative incidence of COVID-19. Um, last infected during the pre-Omicron era with the older virus uh, yeah, that they get more cumulative incidence and not previously infected the highest incidence. So we see that those infected most recently with the most similar virus were least likely to get uh, a new infection. So they showed us that already. So negative efficacy of COVID vaccines. Now they've shown us negative efficacy of influenza vaccines. Let's look at some of the detail here. So that's the bottom line stuff there. Effectiveness of the coronavirus disease 2019 bivalent vaccine, that's the one we've just looked at. The higher the number of vaccine, vaccines previously received, the higher the risk of contracting COVID-19. So if you want to maximise your chances of getting COVID-19, um, according to the Cleveland data, have as many COVID vaccines as possible, and that way you're more likely to catch COVID. Again, not looking at the side effects, just looking at the incidence of new disease. Effectiveness of the influenza vaccine during the uh, 24 to 25 respiratory viral season. The study was to evaluate the effectiveness of influenza vaccine during the, the flu, the last flu season that we're just coming out of hopefully now. Now the method that they used here, uh, employees of the Cleveland Clinic and employment in Ohio on October the 1st 2024 are included. Cumulative incidence of influenza is what they looked for. Whether they were vaccinated was one group or whether they were unvaccinated against influenza. This is flu vaccine, remember. So they can compare one group against the other. This is good uh, research methodology. And they found out that those that were vaccinated got more influenza. So <laughs> people that had this is true. People that had the influenza vaccine got more influenza. It was a negative immunity of getting on for 27%. It's a bit like a Monty Python sketch, this, isn't it? The vaccine that gives you more of the thing it's supposed to be protecting you 
against. All right, let's carry on. Uh, comparison over the following 25 weeks. Now, the results, and this is, this is the influenza vaccine we're talking about now, remember, over the last influenza season. So out of uh, 53,000 employees, uh, 43,857, 82.1% received the influenza vaccine by the end of the study, working age adults. There was 1,079 cases of influenza, 2.2% of that um, 43,000 uh, people. So pretty good numbers. Now, th these are large numbers. In research, you can do good analysis on numbers like that and get really good uh, statistics out of it, which, of course, they have done. The cumulative influence, the cumulative incidence, that is the number of new cases of influenza, was similar for the vaccinated and unvaccinated states early on. So you think, well, why bother giving it? Because there's no benefit. But then it actually gets worse. I'll just show you the graph here, actually. This is the graphic here. So here we have people that are not vaccinated. So, so well, again, cumulative incidence of influenza up and down there. Weeks of the study along here. Now, initially, those that were vaccinated and not vaccinated, pretty well the same. But then as time goes on, we notice that those that were not vaccinated have a lower cumulative incidence of influenza than those that were vaccinated. The vaccinated were more likely to get influenza. COVID vaccines, influenza vaccine, sorry, not COVID vaccine, influenza vaccine makes it more likely to get influenza in this study. But over the course of the study, the cumulative incidence of influenza increased more rapidly among the vaccinated than in the unvaccinated. And this analysis was adjusted for age, sex, clinical nursing, job, employment location. Risk of influenza was significantly higher for the vaccinated compared to the unvaccinated. Hazard ratio, 1.27, 27% more likely, approximately. Now, they were 95% sure it was between, the hazard ratio was between 1.07 and 1.51. So definitely more likely to get influenza if you had the influenza vaccine. The probability of that result arising by chance was seven in a thousand. So very unlikely that this result would arise by chance. And the 95% uh, the confident it was between minus 55 to minus 6.6. Uh, so cl clear negative efficacy. And of course, they came out with a figure of... Uh, the overall figure, what was it, 26.9%. 20, more likely, more likely to get influenza. Now, these results are generalizable to related healthy adults in the United States, which is a major target for adult influenza vaccine efforts. So you could say, OK, this study was in Ohio. It's clearly true in Ohio. It's not true in California. It's not true in England. It's not true anywhere else. Well, they don't comment in England, actually. But what they say is the results are generalizable to relatively healthy adults in the USA. So in other words, if you did this anywhere in the USA, you would have got the same results or very likely got the same results. It's just that the Cleveland Clinic researchers bothered to do the work, which is a major target for adult influenza vaccine efforts. So we can assume from this that there was way more cases of influenza, at least in working age adults throughout the United States and by extension, potentially all countries in the world, as a result of the influenza vaccination program. Uh, although no studies were done in northern Ohio, there is little reason to assume that effectiveness of the vaccine would have been different in a different geographical region within the continental USA. This is generalisable. Right, their conclusion to this pretty appalling study, really, appalling finding, um, this study found that influenza vaccine vaccination of working aged adults was associated with a higher risk of influenza during the 2024-2025 respiratory viral season. Suggesting that the vaccine has not been effective in preventing influenza this season, in fact, it actually seems to have caused more, more cases. Uh, I am therefore pleased I didn't get the influenza vaccine last autumn because it would have increased my chances, according to this data, of getting influenza, which is a remarkably unpleasant disease. Let's just look briefly at something to do with that. Uh, influenza, of course, it's a respiratory viral infection. It caused 145,000 deaths worldwide, apparently, in 2017. So not to be, uh, 
Not to be poo-pooed. Influenza is a serious illness and you feel terrible. 1918 case fatality rate 2.5%, more than 50 million deaths worldwide. There's a seasonal pattern to the illness, of course. Annual influenza vaccine is often recommended um, by our regulatory agencies. Uh, the fact that our regulatory agencies are largely funded by the pharmaceutical industry, of course, doesn't bear any uh, influence on their thinking whatsoever. They are completely independent uh, bodies. Um, at least I'm sure that's what they would uh, tell you. No evidence that corruption is involved here at all. No evidence. So the vaccine they were using was trivalent inactivated vaccine. Two influenza A virus types, it was H3N2 and H1N1, and an influenza B. So these are the more sort of, uh, the, the uh, influenza A is the more uh, uh, outbreak sort of epidemic one. This is the more uh, sort of uh, persistent endogenous one. So the influence is against those. Efficacy will vary depending on prognostication. So what they do is, of course, it takes a few months to make these vaccines. So they, they basically think, well, what's the flu strain going to be next Winter, okay, it's going to be this, this, and this. In this case, they thought, well, it's going to be uh, H1N1. It's going to be uh, you know, N3, N2. Let's make the vaccine against that. Now, we know that this is generalizable throughout the mainland of the United States. What we don't know is if this was true 2023-2024 season. We don't know whether it's going to be true 25-26 flu season. Be interesting to find out wouldn't it but we do know negative efficacy um in the 2024 20, 2025 flu season consistent completely with what professor robert clancy taught us last week i'll put the link to that excellent video on negative uh vaccine efficacy consistent with data on the covid vaccine from cleveland consistent with data on the covid vaccine from um, quebec in canada and now negative efficacy for the influenza vaccine uh, from the Cleveland Clinic. Now, my concern here is, I've just put a note there, my concern is here. People will say, you know what, these um, dead viral vaccines aren't working very well. What we're going to have to do is change from mushed up dead virus vaccine, attenuated dead viral antigenic challenge vaccines, to mRNA vaccines. Do you see the logic there? Given that these current dead viral vaccines aren't working, hey, hey, we need, we need a new, we need, we need to go to the mRNA influenza vaccine. A prospect which personally I find horrific. Anyway, let's hope that's not the case. But for now, we know that negative, basically 27%. Let's get it right negative 26.9 percent efficacy in the working age population of having the influenza vaccine a healthcare intervention that does that makes it more likely you get what it's supposed to protecting for while opening us up to potential adverse reactions <laughs> let me know what you think for now as always, thank you for watching.